All right, everybody, today is Thursday. It is September 14th. Welcome to the Dog Walk presented by Barcel Sports. I'm in studio here. Got a uh, guest here. Are you the newest employee? Um, Content guy? Who have we hired since? Uh, I don't know. When did Nicky Smokes come in? He to, might be. He might a, be after. A little. Yeah, because I was. Yeah. He was NBA playoffs, right? Like he was a playoff bet with Dave. Yes, and then he didn't start until like. A month ago, so he's yeah. He was yeah. like on freeze. Yeah, it's just, <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah. I, I I I'm gonna I'm gonna have that attitude here for like five years. I think where I'm just <laughs> like I just feel like the newest guy. Yeah, but it's it's gotten a lot better since I moved here. Like I, I definitely felt like I was on an island because I got hired and then I was living in L.A. and uh, I just felt like such a. I just felt like the guy. I felt like the new kid at school. And I was going to the lunch table, and I got put at like the lunch table, like way over in the corner. <laughs> yeah, further. Than <laughs> and that. I was just, uh, yeah, just kind of hanging out and watching everyone else having fun. And um, it's been it's been life changing to be here in Chicago for sure. Hey, let's take a break because we're going to talk about ChevyDriveChicago.com. Calling all Bears fans, Barstool and ChevyDriveChicago.com want to give you a chance to enter to win a VIP game watch experience with the Barstool Chicago team. Uh, you and a friend can get a chance to watch the Bears versus Kansas City game on Sunday, September 24th at a local Chicago bar. We will be out there at Cody's Public House in Lakeview. We're excited for it. It's going to be a good time, and we want you to join us. So go do that. Go join the raffle, and you have a chance to win. All you have to do to enter to win is go to ChevyDriveChicago.com, and while you're there, take a look at the new truck lineup, and remember, it's time to drive what Justin Fields drives. Silverado, Colorado, ton of great options if you go to ChevyDriveChicago.com. Uh, I know just week one, people were telling me all the Silverados they saw out in the lot, the South lot, the Waldron deck, whatever it is. It's great to have Chevy and the Bears be partnered up. So make sure you get it in the action. Go to ChevyDriveChicago.com and check out that fleet and uh, enter that contest and come join us for that Bears week three. We're going to need some uh, momentum. We're going to need some good juju. So make sure you come out. Um, and, yeah, on that note, we can hop back into the interview. Yeah, no, so it's great to have you, Mark Titus. Um, you've been – so – I, I want to say, like, I'm sorry for having you tell, like, everything from the beginning no, again. Okay. Because I'm sure you've done it a million times. But I feel like at this point, like, you've been in the game so long. Yeah. Where, like, it almost needs to be rehashed it really, a little yeah, it's bit. Yeah, it's been a while. And I've, I found that coming to Barstool, I took for granted that people – not that I feel like everybody in the world knows who I am, but um, that – I, I have been in the game for a while and I've been doing stuff with Barstool for a while. And uh, I, it, it is funny that like, I kind of have to explain like there, there I, I've had a few different times. People have tagged me in tweets where they uncovered that. Like I didn't really play much at Ohio state. Like, you know what I mean? Like it's been that long. Anywhere else, like, Which is crazy. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that when that shit starts happening, it makes me feel very old because <laughs> I literally have a book titled don't put me in coach. And like, that's the whole reason I have a career. Um, <laughs> But yeah, that that's happened since I got hired here. Is like a couple different times I've had dudes be like, "This guy fucking sucks. He doesn't." Even, I looked up his stats and he doesn't. He never even played at Ohio State. And I'm like, "What are we doing here?" It's like, like this buddy, is, that's the bit. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, I, that's my story. How I got into the content game was that I just uh, I was a walk on at Ohio State on the basketball team, um, and. I started my blog uh, back at a time when um, there really wasn't Twitter and, you know, there was Facebook kind of, but it wasn't, Facebook was almost like a secret club because you had to have um, a college email address to, to have a Facebook. So like, it wasn't like a, you didn't use Facebook to build a brand. You use mm -hmm. Facebook to just kind of like fuck around with your friends and yeah. just like, here's a picture of me drunk last night, yeah. uh, you know. Right now um, walls, remember that? Right now yeah, 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 you just write on a wall. Oh yeah. Um, so there really wasn't a way to like, you know, if you wanted to to entertain an audience, you wouldn't do it on Facebook. You, Twitter was like in its infancy. Uh, podcast didn't really exist. It was it was blogging. That was like obviously that's how Barstool got big too. Yeah. Um, so that's what I did was I just kind of like wrote stories about. Uh, it, it was really more of like a therapy thing for me because I was uh, I was a pretty good high school player and I was used to being the best player on my high school team and mm -hmm. and playing and like the idea of me going to games and not playing was a foreign concept. And suddenly I got to Ohio State and like my ass was never playing. And um, it just kind of became like a therapy thing where I was like, I'm just gonna write about how I don't play and make fun of myself. And it just kind of took off because yeah, back then the media landscape was so different that like it was, it was unusual to hear from, even though I wasn't like a real athlete, it was unusual to hear from 
guys who are on teams that you could watch on TV. And then you hear from those guys like directly, like that sounds insane now, but there was once upon a time where like you, if you're watching a team play on television, the only way to hear from those guys was if they did an interview with somebody else. And so I was, I wasn't the first by any means, but I was like, you know, in that initial wave on the internet of athletes that was like, that were like, I'm just going to shoot it from the hit, like let it rip. This is yeah. me talking the way I talk. Um, and I just wrote stories about playing basketball at Ohio state and, and, and it helped that we were really good. Like I was on some really good Ohio state teams. So people were more interested in like the stories about my teammates and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, it just kind of blew up and I've, I've, I've progressed through my whole career, just kind of waiting for someone to tap me on the shoulder and say the, the thing's over, the ride's over. And <laughs> it hasn't really happened yet. We're so. still rolling. Well, still obviously uh, opportunity meets talent and that's kind of what happened, right? So you, it, you found a niche where, yeah. And, and you're right. You say that sounds crazy, but do you remember when Twitter was new? Oh yeah. yeah and it's like, yeah. Oh my God, the world could see what's on Ashton Kutcher's mind. Right. You know, yeah, and it no, was like, yeah. it was a foreign concept. Yeah that these people were going to be talking seemingly to you every time they type something out. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's crazy to say now, but yeah, that I, I was, you know, and, and in a lot of ways it's changed so much that I almost feel like I've aged out of the internet, which is not probably the right thing to say when you work at Barstool Sports, but like, that's what I, I, I've, try to go on TikTok every so often. I'm just like, what the fuck is Dude, this? Dude, I'm right there with you, you know? man. I'm um, right there with you on that. So, yeah, because I, I do remember a world, viv very vividly, I came of age in a world where there like wasn't this sort of thing. And so, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, it, it, is, it is a weird thing because like I have my career and the life I have because of the internet and social media and all that sort of stuff. But now I wake up every morning, I'm like, I don't even understand this anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because you wrote blogs. Yeah. And that turned into a book and then that turned into podcasting, right? Yeah. That's kind of in the trajectory. And now as the ball keeps getting pushed further, it's like, all right, now it's like, hey, we need you to put your face in front of the camera right. and start talking about something for 30 seconds right. that people will really click on and watch on a loop. And it's like, whoa, where are we going? Right. Where right. are we going? That's that's very, uh, you know, I, I get it. And I don't want to be the guy that like shits on the younger no. generation or anything. No, yeah. Um, but it's just like, I don't understand. I just don't understand it. That's all it really is. It's mm -hmm. that, that just happens as you get older. You're just like, I don't, I don't get it. This isn't for me. I, I, the, the t I've never once in my life. And I mean this, and I'm not trying to like come across as a, a, a guy who's above TikTok or anything else. I'm just, it's just genuinely how I feel. I have yet to see one single TikTok where I was like, that was a good TikTok. You know? <laughs> yeah. Like not simple. I've had friends yeah. send me shit like crazy. where they are like, dude, this is so fucking funny. You're going to love this. And I watched it. And I'm like, I don't, I just don't get it. I don't get it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, but it is interesting here too. Cause we, we talk about that a lot just cause our, our Chicago crew has been around for a long time at Barstool and you know, we were hired to write blogs. Yeah. And like, I, you know, I, I, I went to school and I, I, I got a degree in radio and shit. This is what I want to do. I want to talk on a microphone, but like if you weren't prepared for that and you're just writing blogs, it's like, hey, you got to be doing this. You got to be making merch. You got to be doing uh, yeah. you know, TikToks. You could be like, whoa. Yeah. I was just, you know, writing a couple paragraphs saying what was going on in the Bears game. Like and it could be a lot for people for sure. Because, it was but when I got hired here, it was oof, it was a lot yeah. because uh, I um, I get hired right before March Madness and I went to New York for about a month for March Madness. Cause I thought like it was, it was very important to me that as I started here and I was like launching a new show and all that sort of thing, I wanted to be in the thick of things because I just want, I just felt like if I needed a resource or I needed someone to take a look at, I wanted to be able to just like walk over to the desk and talk to someone, not like send an email to an anonymous person that yeah. I've never met before, you know, over in LA, uh, me living in LA. So, um, I stayed in New York for the month and it was, it was just a complete whirlwind of what you just said, where it was like, I, I came to this company kind of like part of the reason I came was because I knew my role was going to expand a little bit, but also, uh, I, I thought like I was just going to do what I'm good at and what I know how to do. And when I got here and, and all the different like branches of the barstool empire, just kind of reaching out to me and I got merch. I got like five merch people hit me up and they're like, we need shirt ideas. And I'm like, this is new. I've never done this before. Yeah. I don't, were you ever a fucking merch? I've never designer? really thought about this. Yes. And, uh, I got a meeting with like social people and they're like, we got to make sure we get this many clips and do this and this. And I'm like, I've never like, honestly, when I use social media, I just, if I feel like tweeting something, I fire it off. And if I don't, I don't. And that's just kind of how I've always operated. And, uh, 
you know, like that was that was just a complete whirlwind because like Barstool is successful, obviously for for having figured it out and 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 you know th this company kills it, and that's why I wanted to work here. But um, it, it, it there was an adjustment period for sure of like okay, so there's 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 no limit to like what you can do here, basically. Yeah. Like if you wanted to, if I wanted to do just any sort of media about any sort of topic, I do think that they just let you loose and they're like, go try it. You're, we'll let you try it. Like if, if it doesn't work, we'll might pull the plug, but like, go ahead, go try it. And that's crazy to me. <laughs> it, 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 it is wild. Like if you wanted to rebrand the Mark Titus show, like a little, and I know it's not only college basketball, especially the off season, like you had us on and you've had a lot of bar right. people on, but if you're like, Hey, you know what? Kind of tired about talking about college basketball. Yeah. Like they might be like, uh, okay. But they would probably say, okay. Like yeah, I mean, that's, like, yeah, yeah, like, no problem. Like if you don't want to, do that's it, kind like. of what I have been. Cause I mean, <laughs> the reality is like, I, I, I've had one of the top college basketball podcasts for, for years now. And, um, you know, I, it, it matters to me year round, but the, 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 the reality of the, the dollars and cents of, of it all is like, this country does not care about college basketball 12 months a year. Yeah. So, um, that was kind of the idea too. When I started my show, I was like, all right, I ultimately just want to talk about stuff that I'm interested in. And more often than not, it's going to circle back to college basketball, but yeah. I don't want to limit that. So like when I moved here, yeah, I had, I had you guys on, I had the Chicago crew on cause yeah. I was like, I want to talk to you guys about Chicago and, and I've been doing a little bit more of that, but yeah, this, this company allows me to do that. Whereas other places I just kind of got put, I got, I got pegged as like the college basketball guy. Mm -hmm. And even, even here yesterday, I'm sitting on the couch, uh, just talking to, I think I was talking to Brandon about week one. Um, and Shay overheard me and he's like, you're a football guy. And I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like, yes, Shay, I watch. Uh, yeah, but I don't, I don't blame him, but I'm just like, yeah, dude, I fucking every Saturday and Sunday in the fall, I park my ass on the couch and I watch nothing but football all day, every day. Yeah. I'm a sports fan, you know, and yeah, like, yeah. but I just kind of get pegged as like a basketball guy. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so it's been fun so far to be able to, to expand a little bit. So how many months out of the year does America call, care about college basketball? It's like, one half month <laughs> it's like two <laughs> weeks in march genuinely though like what, uh, what, what, it depends what on say? the part of the country because i think what, what's frustrating to me is that i i feel like college football and the nfl have a nice relationship a nice symbiotic relationship where like if you tell someone you're a fan of both it's not even it, I, not only is it not unusual that that seems to be the norm like the, the people i know you just say you love football and you're watching college on saturday and you're yeah. watching pro on sunday and it's never, you don't really give much thought to like which one, you know, people do naturally like one more than the other, but you're yeah. not like really arguing over it. That's the exact opposite of college basketball and the NBA. They like college basketball fans fucking hate the NBA. NBA fans fucking hate college basketball. And it's become like a proxy for the culture war almost of like which one you like. And it's so, it that that's the part that just drives me insane because um, I, 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 I love both. I do love the NBA. Now I get frustrated. I, I like college more. I get frustrated by, I was going to say, be honest, you, you kind of hate the NBA. I hate you? NBA regular season at <laughs> yeah. this point. I love the NBA playoffs, yeah. but, um, so to answer your question, there are places around the country where they do care about this year round. Yeah. Um, it's just that like, if you, if you work in media, you you, you national media, you're going to live in New York. You're going to live in Chicago. You're going to live in LA. Um, and those places I don't think do. So then it just becomes like a distorted view of like, yeah, you know, nobody in New York or LA cares that much about this. So maybe it doesn't matter. But then when I go back home to Indiana, uh, you know, in the summer, all anybody wants to talk to me about is like Purdue's recruiting class and Indiana's recruit, you know? Oh yeah. Um, keep an eye on Evansville. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's, like, a, th 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 that's yeah. all anybody talks about. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, it is what it is, but, um, I, 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 I'll never really change that part. It's hard to like undo a tiger doesn't lose its stripes, right? Like that's, that's mm -hmm. what I was raised on. And that's how I'll, I'll care about this shit till I die. That's, that's good, man. <laughs> because you do like, there is always a sense of lull. I feel like, have you ever felt that lull where yeah. you're like, man, I'm just like, I'm just maybe not into it right at this point. Mm -hmm. And then you always kind of need something to get you recharged up again, whether it be like rule changes or a program who is on the rise or, right. you know, a program who, you know, has a new coach. So that's, what's nice about college at least. Yeah. There's always, there's always something new and it's always, um, the, the, and, and the, the, the history of the, the programs themselves are bigger than any one person or any one coach or any one play, you know? So like it, it is a massive deal when, um, 
North Carolina plays Duke, and it doesn't matter if Coach K is not there anymore, and it doesn't matter if Roy Williams or Dean Smith isn't there anymore. Like it just kind of it just it just works. Um, you know that that's true of pro sports as well. But um, yeah, I, I I love it. I I there there been t- I, I don't think it's going to happen as much in Chicago, but there have been a lot of times uh, living in Los Angeles where I kind of uh, people look at me like I have three heads when I say I'm into college basketball. And they're like, <laughs> they like they like think I'm like special. Some they're like you understand that like the NBA players are more talented, right? And I'm like, yeah, I get it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, better shooting percentage. Yeah. Um, so going back to kind of how Barstool has you wear a lot of different hats, like we said, you're, you're a podcaster, you're a blogger, you're a you know merchandise, merchandise designer, like all that stuff. What was it like at the ringer what was it like at fox like was it just straight up like you just do your show and that's all you were kind of um, yeah okay yeah that's uh, the ringer was um boy i really couldn't get out of that uh that shell or that that identity of being like the college basketball guy there yeah um which was ultimately why i think i left uh because fox did give me the, the reason I, I, I really did love my time at Fox, I was the college basketball guy at Fox, but uh, Fox had television rights and Fox had like, like was super into college basketball. Whereas the ringer, I had to like ex- justify my existence at that company at times. Yeah. Cause they're just so NBA. That, 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 that's what I mean about the divide of like the idea of working at a company that cares so much about the NBA. And I'm like, if you guys love basketball, what if I told you there's like more basketball you could watch? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. this is, you would love this as well. Yeah. You know, all these guys, you know, when they have the draft and they, mm-hmm. they, all these teams draft all these guys, you know, these guys are like coming <laughs> from like a place, right? Like they're coming, like, yeah. don't you want to watch where they're coming from? Um, so Fox was like more into college basketball and uh, that, that was, that was fun. And I, I really enjoyed working for them, but yeah, it was, it was definitely just like kind of do your show. I, I tried to branch out a little more at Fox. I did a college football tour um with charlotte wilder and that was a lot of fun very eye-opening we went to a bunch of different places all over the country uh to to do this like fox college football like a we just basically followed the big noon kickoff um wherever they went we would just basically go there and we would just do like social clips and uh it was cool um but yeah i it, it was it was hard to break free and barstool is the one place that like i i was already kind of doing it on the side i was kind of cheating on my other companies already because like i mm-hmm. I would always go on part of my take and I would always, you know, and, and, and they would have me on to not talk about college basketball. That's how I started going on. But then suddenly, you know, like I'm doing the life show with Rosillo yeah. and like, I just kind of come on and shoot the shit with the guy. I talk NBA with those guys. Um, and then Jeff asked me to come on the dozen and mm-hmm. I'm doing that now. And suddenly I looked up and I was like, I, I'm, th- I'm kind of doing all the stuff <laughs> I want to do at Barstool and they're just not paying me for it. Yeah, you know? yeah. So I might as well just go work for them. Right. Yeah. Uh, and that's kind of how I ended up here. So. Yeah. Cause that's interesting. So it's to you know, so the ringer in and of itself. So you did one shining pod and yeah. how many times a week was that? Oh, uh, we did like two, but we do, we, you know, when the season would get hot and heavy, we'd bump it up to probably three. I bump think. it up. Yeah. Okay. So you got a couple episodes. So other than that, you were just, like hopping on other people's podcasts or yeah what, and that was really that was just kind of at it. the ringer like yeah. i wouldn't even do that yeah i would just like kind of do my show i mean by the end there uh it, it's the good old days like the guys who were in that office um because we we had like our own little separate uh office the, the the ringer had like a an old hollywood type compound like we we worked on a uh a film um how do i say it I, i'm not i'm not I'm not good at the film terms or whatever. It was like a studio. Like it was like where they shot like TV a shows. Set? It was a set. That's uh-huh. the word I'm looking for. Thank oh, you, Eddie. Yeah. Uh, so we, we were like on a mass, a lot, a lot with a bunch of sets. And we had like a bunch of different offices that were scattered about the lot. And um, one of the offices we had was just like, it was me, it was Tate, it was Kyle, who was the producer of our show. Jim Cunningham, who ended up being the producer of our show at Fox. Uh, and then Tommy Alter, who is a booker for everybody at the ringer. And he now works with JJ Reddick's podcast. And, mm-hmm. and he just like is kind of Illuminati, if we're being honest, just knows everybody. <laughs> Tommy's just one of those dudes that, yeah, that knows yeah. everybody. And it was like the five of us in this one little tiny office. And by the time I had left the ringer, um, I got into, I just got into like bad habits of like, we would do the shows in the morning. I would go get like brunch <laughs> at a place next door. Um, that would be serving like bottomless mimosas. I just like have like three mimosas, <laughs> four mimosas. Um, I would come back to the office and then we had a golden tea machine <laughs> in the office. And, uh, 
And like Tate and Kyle and I would just like drunkenly play golden tea until we sobered up and then we would leave. And and the reason I fell into this pattern was because I, I wanted to go to an office and be around people and like be create like, you know, get the creative juices flowing. And I would just like keep going in there and I would just be put on a shelf. So like this kept happening over and over where I'm just like sitting in the office, twiddling my thumbs after the show, like waiting for something to do. And like, you know, does anybody want me to come on and talk about something that's not college basketball? Yeah. The answer was no, almost always. Um, Why was that though? So, but then I didn't want to like just do my show and go home. So I was like, here's the, here's the answer. Why don't I go throw back a few and then come back and play golden tea all yeah. day. And, uh, you know, it was a ton of fun, and we reminisce on those days when we, when all of us get together. We're like, "Damn, that was that was really fucking funny." We just like <laughs> played golden tea, and the, um, but it's also like, you know, you get to a point where you're like, "All right, if I want to take a career seriously and like actually, at some point, I gotta, I gotta yeah. grow up and like stop." Well, I, stop I, doing this. A bunch of mini offices doesn't really sound conducive to a it collaborative was not, environment. Yeah. It does yeah, not it sound bad. like. That. I, I think I, I assume they've changed it since then. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe not. I don't know. I don't know. It's a lot different than where here we are waiting for our new office. It's about a month out, and we are just all over each other. Everybody's on top of each other. Yeah, it's so packed, dude. Yeah. How do you feel about it with it, everybody moving in? I mean, it's nice overtaking. It, like it's not like it's been, obviously we've done a few pods together now. It's been nice to chop it up with people like you. We see Brandon and Che and all those guys every day. It's nice. We just need more space at this point, you know. And, yeah. and it's gonna come. I think everyone's like, hey. This sucks, but it is what it is, and it's eventually going to get better. Do you feel like you're going to lose the uh, charm of Chicago by bringing in a bunch of outsiders? Like, do you, do you think that's going to like the city will lose its charm, or like not our, the not our the group? like our crew, your crew? Did you have like a Chicago feel to it? And now, even though we're based in Chicago, you get all these this mix of people that aren't really from here and don't really that that this isn't going to actually feel like a Chicago office. It's just going to be. Yeah, placed well, in Chicago, dude. Chicago's such a fucking big city, and I know it's like, duh, dude, it's the third largest city in the U.S. Yeah. But it is different in the sense of like Manhattan, where there's just a lot of there's just a lot of space. Yeah. There's di so many different neighborhoods. There's a lot of things to do here where I don't think it's gonna be like everyone's gonna find their own little niches and stuff like that. Yeah. And I don't, I'm not not crazy worried about it because like if you're from here, you're from here, and I, you know. Born and raised, I'll always be a Chicago guy. You know what I mean? So it's not, it's not, not really. I feel concern. like most of the people that have moved here too do love it so far. Seems like it. Yeah. And which is that great. helps with like trying to ingratiate into the culture where it's, um, yeah, I, I do feel like the new office, like in a year or two years, we will look up and it will feel, it will have a Chicago feel to it. I think, because I think everybody's, especially the people that came from New York seem to be excited to get it. Like they didn't vibe well with New York. So they're like, yeah. this is going to be awesome that it's a little more chill. Yes. In the city. It's a totally different city, yeah. man. It is. Yeah. I mean, but like, I, I also am like a diehard, like it's one of those people where it's like, Oh, you, you know, this guy's from Chicago. He'll tell you about it. You know? Yeah. And I, I do. I just truly genuinely love where I'm from. So it's good for, it's good for the city. A lot so, of people um, from Chicago do love that. That's something I've always yeah. noticed my whole life. Um, yeah. And now I'm starting to learn why. You but know, but yeah, you know, but like, it's just one of those things where I don't know, like those like little, uh, we'll call them Rust and Chicago. I wouldn't say Chicago's Rust Belt, but like those Detroits and the Cleveland right. and all those right. are like, you got a sense of pride because right. like you're, you tough out these winners yeah. and you just right. trudge through them and then you're, you know, you're, you're, I think better for it maybe is the right word. Probably <laughs> not, but you know what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Uh, Chicago people also really love the city flag. Like really love the city. This it's is a big best. flag city. It's the best. I have a hat. This I've is got a, shirts. <laughs> I've got everything. I mean, yeah. it, it's, it's incredible. Um, it's like Colorado, but that's a whole state. They love their flag. Yeah. Uh, Maryland yeah. loves their flag. Oh yeah. Like they'll throw that shit on anything. Oh my God. And then Chicago, I know it's just a city versus states, but like Chicago's up there in terms of like just a population that just goes nuts for their flag. And oh, I, see, yeah. I see those four stars, even like, never mind the flag, you just see like the stars everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere in the city that is stars that are on the flag. What do you think about it? I think it's cool. I mean, like, I, I don't, it's, it's, uh, it's something I noticed right away, but it is something that like I think helps build pride. And I think there is something to that. I think, like, like I said, like even before I moved here, I, I, it's something that I noticed that people from Chicago love being from Chicago. They yeah. fucking love it. And um, I think that all plays into it. I think you do have like the flag everywhere and all that. It just like helps build like a unified culture of like, this is, 
our city totally. and our flag and whatever else, you know. And because you know, it takes we take a lot of shit too. You know, yeah. there's a lot of you know yeah. national media talking oh, points and whatnot. It's like, oh my god, just come here for once and it will be not anything like right they're saying. Right. Um. Where which flag is the best of the three? Maryland, Colorado, or Chicago. The the uh, Colorado one is kind of like the Cubs logo, isn't it? Isn't it just like the Cubs C? Yeah, it's like a little, like little a, yellow, little red. The Chicago one, I'm I'm not just parent. I, I think Maryland has too much going on. I agree with that. It's just a, like I don't. No disrespect to Maryland. No disrespect. Yeah. I think if I was from Maryland, I'd be into it. Yeah. As an outsider, I'm like a little too much going on. Yeah. Um, the the Colorado one's pretty cool, but I don't really get it. The Chicago one, I, I took one of those architectural tours, and they mm-hmm. explained to me what the flag means. Um, I don't remember all of it, but I love that there's a story behind it. Yeah. Know? They're uh, like, there's four big events that happened in Chicago. Chicago Fire. And the blue lines represent the river or yeah. something. Mm-hmm. And I was like, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> you got that right. So, uh, But no, the star, like what makes that cool, what makes the Chicago flag cool is that the star is... I, like I said, I see the star, like someone, like a, like a coffee shop will just put up like one star and then they'll just like write like free coffee today or like, you know, buy one, get one free inside the star. And I just kind of identify that. Like I see the star immediately and I know like what that's Chicago. Is. That's like a Chicago. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> no. That's, that's cool. <laughs> Everyone loves the flag. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. Um, what about, so ultimately that was kind of what attracted you to come here though, because you were doing so many things, uh, already with the company so like i might as well jump in now were there was there any hesitation being we'll call you like a little more traditional media yeah right yeah where like those kind of people typically are like oh they're they're the bad guys like yeah i can't believe you would go there like yeah i'm not blind to the realities of the the perception that barstool has yeah and um in mainstream media type circles but what's funny eddie is uh Every place I worked, every place I've ever worked, at some point in time, I've sat in on a meeting where Barstool has been brought up as like, we need to copy what they're doing. And I always found that fascinating that publicly, some of the people that would work at these places, um, and not even necessarily places, you know, like not, I don't, I don't mean to like call out my former employers. I mean, like just like all sorts of, you know, people that are in mainstream media, um, will obviously shit on Barstool and like say how disgusting xyz is about how we run business here um but behind closed doors there i was in a lot of meetings that were like how do they do that how do they how is it that they and it would drive me crazy because my whole career until i got here and i i laugh with this with uh, with tj about this i was i was the the crazy guy like i that was my role in, in traditional media at barstool i've i've become the straight man and for the first time in my career i have people complaining to me that i'm like super boring and super <laughs> dry and it's like my head is spinning a little bit because i'm like my whole life i've the criticism is like this guy doesn't take anything seriously like if i you know i worked at espn for a little bit and i would write articles and post them on espn.com and people would read them and be like what the fuck did i just read like this this guy's insane you know and then I come to Barstool and it's like, this guy's boring. <laughs> like, yeah. why doesn't he, he hasn't taken his shirt off once. When is he going <laughs> to shotgun a beer? When is he going to, you know? Um, but yeah, I, I just found it fascinating. And I think that's what ultimately made me realize it was the right move was that I, I really thought on like all these meetings I would take or, or I would sit in on. It wasn't like I was running the meetings, but uh, Barstool would get brought up and be like, how can they like make a t-shirt and like everybody just buys it? And how can like you know, like their production value on some of these shows isn't great, but like, God damn, they got numbers on these shows. Like, how are people watching this? If, um, and I, I remember like sitting in these rooms and raising my hand and I'm like, well, it's pretty obvious. They're just like super authentic. And like, they, they don't try to be something they're not. And they're just like, shut the fuck you. you Shut shut up. (laughs) We're going to do it this way. Let's do it this way. But also try to do it this way with a little barstool flavor. And I'm like, just keep raising my hand in the back. I'm like, you can't do it that way. You either got to do it authentically. Like they're doing it. Or you're not, it's not going to work. You can't half-ass like what they're doing. And um, that just became a frustrating because like I would, I would, I would be put in those positions all the time where like I was, I was kind of, that was my role at traditional media was like, I was the barstool guy, but I was more palatable for people. Mm -hmm. Like I was like, like I kind of understood the bar. You could send me to like college campuses and I would be able to bong beers with the frat bros, but also I'm not going to, there's no world in which I would, you know, say something inappropriate that's going to, you know. I'm not going to swear on live television. You don't have to worry about that because I'm yeah. a professional. So I think that was like kind of the what I, how I fit in. And anytime I would be put in these situations, I remember doing a live show at Fred's 
in um, Baton Rouge, this bar at LSU, and and their uh, Caleb, I think, did a video on them one time where they their phrase is like "We do the fucking okay. at Fred's." Yeah. Um, and we were doing a lot, and I was going to promote the live show we were doing, and I took a picture of like it said uh, at their bar like "We do the fucking," and I took a picture and I was like, "Come to Fred's tonight, whatever." And my boss is texting me, me like, "You have to take this down. You can't like promote it like this." And I said, "I thought the whole point of like this." live show stuff we're doing was to like tap into that and they're like well we want to tap into it but like not like that and i just remember thinking like dude this is insane like you can't hang it out you can't like halfway tap into this stuff so um anyway that that it, it definitely existed like the the fear i guess of like uh ruffling the wrong feathers but i knew deep down that a lot of these people are hypocrites and a lot of the people that you see that are um you know, the, a lot, a lot of the people in sports podcasting that shit on Barstool. I mean, just the idea that you could say like, I, I hate Barstool and all they stand for, but part of my take is good. Like right there, it's like, yeah, you're a fraud. You're mm-hmm. an absolute fraud because like that is, that is like kind of the number. That is not even kind of like that's the Barstool show at this point. Is like part of my take, you know. So it's like I don't understand. And yeah, I, I just saw through all that, and ultimately I was like, I got to do what's best for me because I can't keep trying to appease people and and you know. You have to, dude. That's one thing that I've kind of, uh, I've kind of had a, a mantra of that, where if you just kind of sit back and you realize that every single person in the world is a little bit of a hypocrite, yeah, things kind of get easier. It gets a lot easier. You know what I mean? Because think about it. Everyone's got that friend where it's like, oh, you, maybe you've known the person for forever or whatever, and they're like, ah, that was a little dicey. But it's like, ah, everyone like turns a blind eye to something, right? And it's just. For people who say they don't, it, they're they're full of shit. Uh, one, one of the things I said on one of my first shows when people lost their mind that I was coming to Barstool was uh, I, I worked at Fox for four years and had my paycheck signed by Rupert Murdoch, and no one said a goddamn word to me about that. <laughs> yeah, dude, exactly. And, and that, then I come to Barstool, and they're like, how could you work at that place? And I'm like, bitch, do you know where I worked at? Yes, dude, <laughs> it's know? shit like that where it's like they don't even understand. Yeah, like, yeah. you know. And I don't say that in like a bad way. Like People are like everyone has something deep and dark and sinister going on, but it could be like little shit, you know, Yeah. that they're casting their, their fucking ruling thumb on, but you know, whatever is there, um, was there, and you don't got to name names, but was there, <laughs> did you notice some secret like unfollows? Did anyone like, um, give you a stern? Like, I'm so disappointed. Honestly, I, I haven't really felt that. In fact, I've, I've felt it's more on my end. I have almost like an insecurity to like reach out to people to come on my show. Cause I'm, I don't want, I don't want people to say no, but like try to like let me down softly. Uh, that's interesting. You know dude. what I mean? I, I, I've, I've caught myself doing that where it's like, I want to reach out to someone to come on my show, but I'm really worried that when I ask, they're going to be like, I can't do a barstool show, but how do I say this? And I don't want to ruin a friendship or a relationship. And then I, I'm like, I'm just like an overthinker, Eddie. That's like, that's how, how, that's how I've been my whole life. So, yeah. um, it's really been more on my side of things, I would say, but mostly the people I do reach out to, um, they're like, yeah, come on the show, I'll do the show, I'll do whatever. Um, so I don't, I don't think it's a problem, and I kind of sense that too. That like the the days of Barstool being, I know, I know Dave bought the company back, and and that's kind of the mantra is we're the pirate ship and we're mm-hmm. trying to take down the big boys and all that. But I mean, it's good for like the pep talk in the locker room here, but like the reality outside of these walls is like Barstool is a giant. Um, yeah. So I think like the days of uh, Barstool being perceived as this company that's just sitting in the on the sidelines flinging shit at like the real pe- places i i mean we're in the game at this point as a company so like yeah. i think i think people outside e- even if they don't always agree with how things are done here they at least see the value of the company and they realize that you know like i said earlier where you say bar still stinks but i like pmt that list has gotten way longer also like you oh, like yeah. The, the, yeah it's like yeah. like you just love nick and kb yeah nick like, and kb yeah, yeah. and uh, donnie and yeah, you know and you yeah. just kind of go on and on For and sure. on and the more things that get added to that list, uh, the more you realize maybe I don't hate the company that much. And I, I think that that shift is happening uh, in media as a whole, um, for sure. As a guy that like kind of lived in traditional media, I've seen that for sure. Yeah, no, you're right. Are you um, are, are you on good terms with the sports guy? Um, I, I wouldn't know. <laughs> I, mean, I would, I would you have to ask him. Yeah. I don't, I, we don't really have a relationship. Oh, so, no? Yeah. But it's not like, I don't, I don't have like his face on a dartboard where I'm, yeah, you know, you don't. like, I don't, it's just kind of, it was like a, he was my boss for a while and I don't yeah. work for him anymore. And I just kind of moved on and that was that. I, I, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. 
I, I, I like if, if, if Bill walked into this room, I'm not like, Oh fuck. Oh, shit, you know, yeah. like, Oh, what's up, man? Like, you know, um, there've been a few different times where, uh, I was going places like half expecting him to be there. Um, and yeah, like I, I thought through it like, cause I, I was, you know, like one of my friends, I, I don't, I'm about to like go out somewhere and one of my friends like, what is Bill going to be there? And, um, I'm like, yeah, I never really thought about that. And like, what would you do if you saw him? Like, I don't know. Like, what's up, man? Like, mm-hmm. I don't know. Like, it's not, um, but yeah, I don't talk to him ever. I haven't talked to him since I left the ringer. Yeah. So you, you just don't know. You're just like, it would be, it would be kind of an interesting thing if you saw him. It would be very funny if he like hates my guts. And, <laughs> you know, like what are the odds of that? What are the chances? What's um, the percentage point? I think Bill does not think about me at all, but when, <laughs> if my name gets brought up, he's like, fuck that guy probably. But again, I'm an overthinker, but I, I don't, I don't think Bill is actively like, I mean, the man has $10 billion and like 12 houses in Southern California. And he's got kids that are like doing cool th- You know, I think his kids are like in college now or, mm-hmm. you know, like to where they're, he's probably at this point, I can't imagine he's sitting around spending a lot of time thinking about that college basketball writer that used to work <laughs> for him all those years ago. Um, but at the same time, uh, you know, Tate and, and Kyle, who I'm very close with, uh, they still work there. Um, and I imagine my name gets brought up and I bet when it does, Bill's probably just like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and if you don't, if you don't mind me asking too, like keep going about how the sausage gets made. Like, what is it about them over there that they don't seem to really, uh, get into college sports like because it's not even just basketball it's like kind of football it, too right it's just it's it's everybody that's in charge at the company just like went to like a liberal arts type school uh-huh. i think and it was just kind of a just like culturally it never made sense to them like i mean like i i tried so hard to get bill into college basketball and he he's like it's, i'm just not it just isn't and, and it's mostly just because how holy cross wasn't ever good like mm-hmm. they were good a million years ago bob Cousy was there but um I think that was ultimately it. It was just a bunch of people. There, there wasn't a ton of diversity of uh, just diversity in general, really. There, um, but uh, diversity of thought, a diversity of like upbringing, diversity of yeah. Um, I remember working there at the uh, when Trump got elected, and just like, I mean, that was that was like the weirdest thing ever to to be working at that company when that happened. Which yeah. like I I just was like, what the fuck's going on right now? Like this is, um, you know, and I don't I don't mean to light no. light that fire or whatever, but it yeah. was just like that that was like a moment for me where I was like, this is, I thought we were like a sports cat, like who you know, like what's going on here? Like yeah. that, that everybody we called an emergency meeting at the company really? when that happened. Yeah. And I was, and, and they put out like a thing, like I, I called in from Ohio. I think I was in Ohio at the time and they put out a, an email an all hands on deck email that were like, we got to call in and do this meeting. And I'm like zooming in. I'm like, this was what the meeting was about. Like, what are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what the hell? Can I get back to like, I, I, I got, I got games I want to fucking watch. Yeah. Like, what are we doing here? <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I think it was just like a culturally, just like everyone that was running that ship it's just from a place where like they didn't that there wasn't college basketball college football just wasn't a thing they're from the northeast where they just didn't have good programs to cheer for or whatever and it just kind of carried on and it is really bizarre because never mind college basketball they just don't care about college football either which is the second biggest sport in the country it's a monster um i never really understood that either but yeah. whatever no it is interesting and it's, it's not just them too like there was a lot of companies that like probably had meetings that were the people were like wait what's going on yeah you know so yeah and i'm not i'm not here to say it's right wrong or otherwise to have those meetings totally what i'm here to say is that when when donald trump was elected president it never once crossed my mind how was my company going to handle this or how you know yeah and and i was just like this is this is not (laughs) yeah i didn't i didn't know this is how the world oh yeah i don't know um no you're right though and and i guess you know things did kind of kind of change but it is what it is um but all right then man i'm excited to have you here you launched your show today as well yeah with brandon recording a couple days early yeah mostly mm-hmm. sports yeah we launched that so check that out um i have i have one bone to pick before we wrap this up which is uh what bone we pick him the chicago bears have ruined my favorite football player <sighs> ever and I'm I'm kind of disgusted with this franchise because Justin Fields is a good quarterback. I will say that again. This man is a good quarterback, and if if you're 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 waking up in September of 2023 and you're saying Justin Fields stinks, I promise you it's not Justin Fields' fault. I will I will carry water for this man for the rest of my life because I saw what he was capable of on a football field. 
uh, a million times at Ohio State, and you're going to say, well, Ohio State produces a lot of good college quarterbacks, but not pro. No, 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 no. This guy was special beyond belief when I watched him at Ohio State. He, he, the idea that people say he cannot throw a football like makes my head want to explode because he dropped dimes every single game. He would just drop balls and buckets, and um, he was in, he was just elect. He was the most electric football player I've ever seen at the college level. Uh, he had the most like heart charisma. On top of it all, Eddie, this man saved Big Ten football. People forget this. Yeah, COVID era. Right? Big Big Ten football and and the the fantasy world I've built in my head would not exist if not for Justin Fields. <laughs> right now in 2023, it would have shut all. It would have all shut down. He saved he saved Big Ten football. He was he he's good. He's good. God damn it, he's good. And for whatever reason, since he's gotten to Chicago, it's just been like. A, a, a slow grind of like, eh, he's kind of good. Well, no, he's, uh, oh, no, he's kind of good. Yeah. And I'm like, what the hell are they doing to this man? Let him, let him be him. I don't get it. I don't get it. I, listen, I'm, I'm still a believer. I'm not off the bus yet. Okay. I'm not, I'm not nearly close to being off the bus yet. Obviously it's a big year. If he doesn't perform this year, you've got to start thinking because that's just the way the NFL works. The time starts again, and we got another pick. And if we do get a high pick from the Panthers, like, do you think about Caleb Williams or whatever? However, uh, some teams just have destiny, yeah. Mark. And and it's kind of like the Bears are one of them. Like, you see what happened to the Jets on Monday. You see, like, I, I, I don't know. The Bears in the quarterback position is just something that – God was like, I'm not, well, that's, who, you know, yeah, that's the thing is like, I didn't, I don't have all that other baggage. I haven't been, I haven't cared about the bears until Justin Fields got here. Yes. So to me, I'm just like, what the hell are you doing to my yes. guy? And to bears fans, you're, it's just like decades of just pain of, of, you yes. know, bubbling up. Um, so the microscope is even, you know, right. More honed in. Right. But I, I'm, I'm going, I was going crazy watching the Packers game. Cause yeah, he's not throwing the ball downfield. He's also, as soon as he takes the snap, he's like looking not downfield because he has to look at all the linemen that are coming after him and he's scrambling. And then people are like, well, his linemen don't know how to block because he doesn't stay in the pocket and he runs out of the pocket. And it's kind of a chicken and egg deal. Cause it's like, maybe he just runs out of the pocket cause he gets sacked. Why would you stand in the pocket? If you're just gonna get blindsided, I might as well get on the run. They don't roll him out at all. Um, and they started to at the end of last year and it was, there was success. Yeah. It was, I, and then, and like people, like he can't throw. Like he, his throw, he, he, he could throw the football. I don't understand where that came that's from. That's bullshit. The interception yeah. was bad, but it's not. This is this is going to be insane. I understand it. <laughs> I'm I'm scared to say the words because people are going to go crazy. But it wasn't like a bad throw of the football. It was a bad read. He he literally just didn't see the linebacker there. But if you watch the the play. The receiver like breaks behind the one linebacker. He just didn't see the the line. But like he, th the idea like he can throw a football. It's not like he's Tim Tebow throwing fucking ducks out here. Correct. Like over th like he he drops mm -hmm. the. If you want to say you can't process the defense, I'll entertain that as a criticism. And I think that's the big criticism. Yeah, right now. He's, he's just not seeing the field well. But the guy is a phenomenal athlete, an incredible leader. He's got charisma oozing out of his pores. He can throw a football at an NFL level and then some. I I, I just go crazy watching the Bears because like. It's always going to fall on the quarterback when the team stinks. The team has stunk since he's gotten there. Um, but I, I swear to God, if every if every player on the Chicago Bears were as good as Justin Fields, they would win the Super Bowl. <laughs> I believe that. I believe that in my heart. If every single player on that team were as good as Justin Fields is at at, at football, the Chicago Bears would win the Super Bowl. I, listen, I, I I like him a lot too. And, prove and, me wrong. <laughs> I, yeah, prove you wrong. Do the what was Brandon's quote? Tell me I'm wrong. Yeah, tell me, tell I'm, me wrong. I'm wrong. Yeah, tell, tell me, me I'm wrong. wrong. <laughs> that, yeah. was, that was I saw that clip. Uh, I don't know, man. We'll see. It, it's a big year. I'm I'm a believer. Like I said, there are some red flags. Yeah. Um, they got him weapons now, so there's not an excuse of that anymore. So hopefully, I don't know what last week's play play calling was. It was absolutely dog shit for him. I know. I I sincerely hope that this gets figured out because I I just can't do poor quarterback play. <laughs> I, I can't do I can't I can't I can't do watching I got so excited to move here because I was like I'm gonna just watch all the Bears games because because Fields is the guy I love him I live in Chicago now I'll be able to talk to all the Chicago people all my neighbors about the Bears this is gonna yeah. be awesome and I mean like one quarter into my first Bears game I was like fuck this yeah. <laughs> I was like I want out welcome I want out <laughs> that's what we bond over that fucking flag and our shitty fucking teams so welcome to Chicago Mark. Uh, um, on that note, we could wrap it up. Thank you, dude. I appreciate you hopping yeah. on. 
I'm happy to do it. Yeah, for sure. We'll do more pods in the future, and it won't be as, uh, you know, serious and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. That's it for today. We'll be back on Monday. We'll see you then.